विश्व दर्पण दृश्यमान नगरी तुल्यन्यागत पश्यन्नात्मि मयया बहिर्वोदूत यद्रया यक्षात्ते प्रबोध समय स्वात्मेवाय तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमहद श्रीदक्षिणाूर्त बीजस्यांतरिवाकुरो जगदिदिर्विकन मयाकलकलना वैचिचित्रीकृत मयावीव विजृंभयोगी वयस्वेक्षया तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमहद श्रीदक्षिणाूर्त तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमहद श्रीदक्षिणाूर्त ओ सहना सहनम भुन सह वीर गरवाह तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तुमाषा वह शातिशाशा सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा श्रोत्र से श्रोत्र मनसो मनोयते वाचो हवाच सौ प्राण से प्राण चक्षुषक्षु अति मुच्यधीरा प्रेत्यास्मादमृता so the student raised a question uh, to the teacher in the first mantra asking about the divine uh, principle why i call it divine principle because student uh, says who is that devaha kau devaha so abhi let's say he is asking about a divine principle what is that divine principle which is present in all the living beings and which makes all the living beings alive so even though the bodies of all living beings are made up of a matter principle well uh, but we know matter by nature is very inert we have decided through five features and so we experience the material body of all living beings is alive sentient and so there must be some divine principle some conscious principle which uh, we call as a divine principle because he is telling devaha which makes the body alive sentient and capable of uh, uh, doing all i mean different spheres of activity including the study of kin operation right <laughs> so this is also activity i mean the the sofa or the chair where you are sitting is not able to study anything and uh, that is also a matter and the body also is a matter then what is it that i am able to study the kin operation then the chair or sofa is not able to study <laughs> that is the divine principle that's what we have said the divine principle is one because of which the mind does its own job thinking emoting everything deciding getting knowledge and senses do their own jobs and therefore that's a principle which makes a which makes a material thing as to a sentient and because of that principle which is present in the body that's called devaha because of that principle well uh, the whole body is sentient and works as a living being and for that question uh, well of course uh, teacher gave the answer in the second mantra a complete answer as such and a complete mantra which we uh, studied also uh, and, and in several classes now he defined that the divine principle of course keeping consciousness in the mind he doesn't say that it is chaitanya etc shrotra se shrotra etc so keeping consciousness in the mind but without using the word consciousness the teacher gave the answer so divine principle is well it is different from all the organs shrutrasya shrutram chakshusha chakshu that so it is it is distinct from the organs and it is that which makes all the organs alive and sentient 
So normally we understand that uh, prana is the one which keeps a person alive. So uh, that is how everyone understands. So in the presence of prana, body is alive. And when the prana goes away, body becomes um, uh, dead. But prana is the only one in principle, is a preliminary understanding. Uh, that is why every living being is of course called prani because it has a prana. So pranaha asyasti iti prani. Prani means a living being. And so, so it is a living, I, I mean, it's a, a it, pranaha asyasti iti prani and therefore one who possesses a prana definitely is prani and so we always feel that this uh, living being has prana and therefore it is alive but ultimately our answer that that's not an ultimate answer because prana itself also does not make the body alive prana functions on account of somebody else prana also does a jo uh, job when a consciousness present in the body and therefore prana se prana that is how the teacher also has said which makes even prana uh, 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 um, uh, function which makes the prana prompted as though and uh, thereby prana does its own job of breathing and etc. And therefore prana enlivens the body not by itself. Okay, prana enlivens the body in one way is okay, but prana enlivens on the body of because they are prompted by someone. In fact, may that, may, that consciousness principle is the prana sit pranaham. Consciousness is one which provides an existence to the prana. And thereby prana elements the body. And therefore consciousness is one which is really pranasya prana. Consciousness is the ultimate principle which, which, is, uh, which is responsible for a sentiency in the body or a life in the body, ultimately. So prana itself borrows consciousness from somewhere. So pranasya prana, chakshu, chakshu, etc. etc. is a divine principle. Having given this definition, teacher pointed out that knowing this divine principle is extremely useful for the life. Ati mucha dheeraha, pretya asma, loka, amruta, adamruta bhavanti, etc. So, uh, you know, people generally ask the question, why should we study Vedanta? What's the, what's the advantage? Well, the teacher gives the benefit of this knowledge. Uh, it only a person gains this knowledge. Well, then the greatest advantage is one becomes free from the load of ahankara and mamakara. Ankara and Mamakara are one which is which which really they are they 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 are the loads on this person. And Ahankara Mamak Ahankara means say you know the sense of I in this body mind sense complex and Mamakara is the extension of it uh, in which we the external world we have I sense or we call it as a mama mind etc. That's called Mamakara. So both of them get dropped through this knowledge. So that is how it is called Ati Mucha. Well, we'll be seeing little, uh, we have left over. So that is uh, called Ati Mucha. Ati Mucha means transcend. What is the transcending the eye sense in the body mind sense complex? And uh, well, then uh, I mean the Hankara Mamakara becomes Mithya, then ultimately, and thereby Raga Dveshas also will not have any hold over this person. And as such likes say he has uh, he has become free from likes and dislikes by doing karma yoga of course but still they are there and they are uh, they are basically real for the person but that um, that reality also goes away of the ragadvesha because the ragadveshas are all connected to ahankara and mamakara and well aham i mean all likes and dislikes are centered on aham and mama so basically um, I mean, I and uh, mine, that's all. I and mine, I is I, ahankara. And mine means it's what I possess. So ahankara, mamakara, reduction is uh, first benefit. And then, well, ragadvesha reduction is also a second benefit. So when ragadveshas are basically neutralized, well, all emotional disturbances are heavily diluted. They go away. So mind feels, uh, you know, security, mind feels peace, mind feels uh, happiness. And whenever I'm talking in, in, term, in, in a common parlance, we are not interested whether mind feels happiness or not, in fact. But this is in common parlance. What is the advantage of your study? Why are you attending these classes day in and day out? And whenever I come to your home, you all the time you are listening. 
what is the what are you doing what are you getting out of it so we have to talk in this way mind feels happiness mind feels secure and then you know like said emotional disturbances are possible because of ragat dvesha ragat dveshas are neutralized etc etc well it has much more benefit of you know jivan mukti and videh mukti which i will talk to you but this in general general uh, common parlance we, we have to use this. don't you cannot tell jivan mukti i get <laughs> jivan mukti and videh mukti and what is videh mukti i i won't get another birth but i want uh, another birth now that for i don't want to study that that so people are always ready so this kind of benefits are only for the advanced students not for the people who are really <laughs> you know in day to day language you have to say like this your emotional disturbance you have to definitely have a little offensive approach also that your <laughs> because they want to corner you because they want to con why are you studying all this and day in and out you say i have a class i have a class i have a class what is what are you doing there and i listen to one, your swami I, i did not find any any kick in myself why should i study really people are saying that people are saying that it is with the, in our circle this is all jivan mukti videh mukti is all right not in the outer circle you can tell like this jivan mukti and videh mukti etc this is the way we have to say likes and dislikes is the only responsible factor for the tragedy of a human life please think this statement this is the only thing even apart from this whatever materially he has his life will remain shattered these are this my sentence you cannot shatter the, your once life will remain shattered if likes and dislikes will have a hold over you no way one can bring a joy in one's life even though apart from thousands of things you may have thousands of things your likes and dislikes will definitely going to create a emotional disturbance and human being is very distinct for bringing happiness which other living beings do not have and that is emotional immaturity that's the only problem human being has at the age of 60 he has complained 65 he has a complaint everything he will have a complaint from the ch- uh, children he, they have not called it's it that itself becomes a complaint they have not called me i see swami ji people this children we have brought up them very well we have faced so much of struggles and now even they don't call after marriage swami ji what is this world that's how you are good swami ji you are free from <laughs> therefore people talk <laughs> like this <laughs> you are not married okay swami ji it's good what i'm saying is this is a emotional maturity immaturity that's what swami had to always talk about vedanta and emotional maturity he wants to connect it that's the only issue human being has he may be intellectually a uh, very high compared to other living beings superior to other living beings physically of course what uh, he has the facility etc well other living beings do not have really superior i can i can i can express myself because i have a i have a language i have a speech other other living beings are birds and all they have everything only they have kaka but when whatever they want to convey they have kaka nothing else a crow has nothing but kaka whatever they want to convey even if wants to express a love to she crow then he has only a kaka nothing you can express you can express even nuances in the your language you can express every way it's an amazing facility the language and the, i mean the speech so human body is very unique extremely unique superior intellectually superior emotionally fragile very much fragile and therefore we have to show the advantage of the study through this way only that emotional disturbance will definitely go away because they are dependent upon ragat dveshas and ragat dveshas ultimately are connected to ahankara and mamakara and this knowledge by giving you the knowledge of the true self well one will not claim oneself a body mind sense complex one will not claim the external world as mamakara as mine and therefore definitely becomes he will have a joy he will have a security he will have because the insecurity depends upon the part um, uh, equating the uh, i the self 
which basically body medicines complex. Otherwise, there is a question of insecurity. Insecurity means I will go in time. I my ex existence will be you know extinguished. What is your existence? That's what uh, I mean. I'm my existence means the body's existence is my existence, and therefore ultimately, ultimately one becomes free from hankara. I mean, giving up the notion of I in the body mind sense complex, one can definitely become free. So this is uh, what uh, has been told as a uh, result. Atimuchya and uh, Pretya Sman Lokat etc. And Atimuchya Bhashikara is defined as Shrotradu Atma Bhavam Parityajya. So giving up the notion um, of I in the ears and um, in the eyes and etc. etc. And uh, so you, you, have, uh, you have everything. They are in you but you, you are not them. That's what it means. Because you have an eye sense in the ears and therefore you call you a, I am a hearer. Well, then definitely that attributes uh, etc. are there in you. Ear, eyes etc. Identifying with them definitely you call yourself as a Savishesha. That I am hearer, I am a thinker, I am a seer etc. But they are incidental attributes. They are available in a, in a particular state of life. Particular state. And, uh, and therefore definitely some, some body etc. This physical body is available only in in a, in a waking state, other etc. available in, in dream state etc. In deep sleep state, even giving up the notion of I sense in all and the I, notion, I mean the I sense itself gets resolved, still your existence continues and therefore definitely you are the one who is free from all this body mind sense complex. So Atimuchya and by learning that, by, by analyzing your three states of experience and understanding that you are basically a witness of all the three states, one can give up the notion, I notion in ears, eyes, etc. But how, how can you derive all this in this mantra? Because Shrotrasya Shrotra, Chakshusha Chakshu. So you are not the I. You are eye of the eye. You are ear of the ear. You are um, basically mind of the mind. And therefore you can give up the eye sense in the mind, in the ears, in the eye, etc. etc. And then second thing is Pretya Asman Lokat Amrutaha Bhavanti. So Pretya Asman Lokat. So there also Bhashikara said Sarva Prani Pratyakshat Lokat Karyakarana Sangatat Abhimanat Ittyartha. So Sarva Prani Pratyakshat Lokat. Ah, it is a protection. It is available uh, directly for your knowledge. So, uh, so Loka means it is generally a world of experience. But Bhashakara beautifully said, Lokyate drishyate anubhuyate iti lokaha. That which is seen, which is experienced, is called lokaha. And thereby sarva prani pratyaksha, for all the living beings, their body is a direct, intimate object of knowledge. Mind is an ob intimate object of knowledge. Eyes, ears, everything, the condition of it, everything is an object of knowledge. Therefore, this is the loka. This karyakarana sangada, this body mind sense complex, is the loka. Because it is experienced directly by the sarva prani by all the living beings and therefore kāna karana sangata abhimāna so giving up the identification with that dying to that actually pretya pretya the word this pretya is used when person dies you know in shastra actually pra plus e uh, e dhatu is there in gatau and um, prakarshena uh, gati prakarshena gati prakarshena means very well he, he has gone he has gone very well, means for goodness. So he will not return in that same body. So that's how Pretya is always used when the person is living the body. So Pretya Asman Lokat. So Loka is this. I mean uh, dying to this body mind sense complex. We will take uh, one meaning uh, first and then we will see the other meaning. So, uh, so dying means basically what? So withdrawing from that. Withdrawing from, like the, the person who is dying, he withdraws himself from the body mind sense complex. So here also, let's take it that way. Withdrawing from this body mind sense complex. If withdrawing uh, from body mind sense complex, um, one cannot become wise. That I am doing every day. I am doing <laughs> every day. Withdrawal is not an enlightenment. Every evening, every night, I definitely give up identification with this uh, body mind sense complex. So in a deep sleep state, if eye sense is there, 
in any part of the body, I am sure you will not have a sleep. You will not have a sleep. Sleep means you are dying as though, as though dying. We have to because the prana is still there. Prana's connection with the gross body is there. Subtle body, gross body connection is there. Yeah. In, in, a, in actual death, the subtle body really gets separated from the um, gross body. Here the connection is there. The connection is that prarabdha. That is the prarabdha. So therefore, uh, basically the subtle body is connected to the gross body in a deep sleep state through prana. That's how prana we always and especially prana, apana, vyana, udana, samana, etc. There udana we always count as a prarabdha. <laughs> because that udana is responsible for taking away the subtle body from the gross body forever. And therefore, basically anyway, but so thing is that connection is there through prana and therefore uh, he gets up in the same body. Otherwise, not dying totally com comes. There are people, champions who believe that, you know, actually the jiva with the subtle body comes out of the gross body. And uh, gross body is totally dead. It's not so. It's not so. Otherwise, in night itself, we'll call the <laughs> people, doctor, whether he is there or not. But it doesn't happen. And uh, next morning, he gets up in the same body. Means that some kind of connection was there. Yeah. So subtle body has a connection because of prarabdha. Of course, there, in sleep, there is a suspension of prarabdha. We should understand this. And but um, he is he continues in the same body, and uh, one minute. So this uh, withdrawal is there. I mean, uh, every uh, every in, in a sleep we have a withdrawal, but withdrawal is not enlightened enlightenment, because well, one, once one wakes up, one realizes that one is the same ignorant person. One, right before going to the sleep I was ignorant I got up also in the morning same ignorant person means withdrawal from the body mind sense complex is not is not uh, the is not the basically enlightenment so basically vyavrutya means uh, dying to this body pretya means uh, you know in terms of knowledge but how can you interpret in terms of knowledge well we are telling you from, from your own experience you get up in the same body and the same ignorant person. So you are not enlightened after going to the sleep. And when you wake up, you don't find yourself enlightened. That is one thing. Second thing is dhira have what is used. So dhira indicates the one who possesses a discriminative knowledge between the Karyakarana Sangata and himself. That I am the consciousness who enlivens the body mind sense complex. Because of me, they are as though they are prompted. They do their varieties of the activities. All the organs are alive, sentient because of me ultimately, including the prana. And therefore, one who possesses that kind of a knowledge, he is an enlightened person. And therefore, by so giving up the identity, I mean, uh, so dying to this uh, Karyakarana Sangata, dying to this complex, dying to this assemblage, well, is nothing but in terms of knowledge only. So, and therefore, uh, it is, uh, and therefore, the wise people know, Diraha. They having known that I am Shotrasya Shotram Manaso Manaha. That is the Atman Atma Viveka. Shotram is an Atma. I am Shotrasya Shotram. I am the one who is a consciousness. And I am Chakshusha Chakshu. Chakshu is an Atma. I am Chakshusha Chakshu. Means I am the consciousness. Ultimately, that is how we are separating. And so, I am no longer subject to death. Entire Karyakran Sangata is subject to death. And therefore, basically, he these people. Pretya asman lokat uh, amrutaha bhavanti. Asman lokat pretya. Asman lokat. From this Karakarana Sangata pretya. Well, they, they, uh, they, they uh, give up the identification with this Karakarana Sangata and they become immortal. Because they gain um, uh, this body, etc., is subject to death. What is subject to death? Dies. What is subject to death? Dies. What is subject to death cannot be made um, uh, immortal. Cannot be made. No way. It is impossible. People are trying and people are thinking also. There is a particular philosophy in India which, which ran for years and years and so-called intellectuals and rationals were a followers not knowing what that particular preceptor was telling. And uh, they, they understood that way that this Brahman or Atma has, you know, um, he's, it is immortal. But it has descended 
and has become mortal now. And you have to lift again through the transcendental meditation. You have to lift yourself from the mortal um, being to this immortal being. And this is all a humbug. Don't, don't believe all this. What is mortal is mortal. It will be mortal. Whatever you run on a New York street, 10 kilometers, 15 kilometers and whatever you want to eat, you eat. All with vitamins and what. Anything you do, you are allowed to do, you are free to do, you have a free will. It will die. In fact, it may happen so that the person who is not doing anything, not eating anything, not taking any nutrients, he may live 15 years more than the person who is taking everything. It all ultimately depends on the prarabdha. And therefore it is subject to death. It is subject to that. A mortal thing can never be made immortal. And what is immortal cannot be immortal, cannot become uh, mortal also. And therefore what is subject to death dies. And so physical body is subject to death because it is put together. Assemblage, our, 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 our theory is very beautiful. What is subject to death must be the assembly. And um, I mean, what possesses varieties of the parts? I always Puja Swami, I think that was Puja Swami's statement. Oh, you know, what uh, possesses parts can fall apart. <laughs> Something like that he used to tell. <laughs> what has a parts can fall apart. And <laughs> that is correct. And therefore, basically, a, a death of the physical body is disintegration into various components. That's all. Disintegration into various components. That is the death definition of death in Vedanta. And a house, a cell, a nucleus, anything which is an assembly will disintegrate into its various components. It's all put together and uh, does not remain in the same form. So if I is just uh, as good as this physical body, then one will feel mortal. You will have a sense of mortality. You will have a notion of mortality because your eye sense is in the body. And body is subject to death. It will die. You won't die. You will have a notion that I, I, I am subject to death. Even though with that notion you can continue, you still you will not die because you are basically consciousness. You are immortal. Immortal can never become mortal. No, but Swamiji, immortal entered in the body. And the consciousness entered into the body and can now, because of the association and long association, beginningless time, and therefore maybe I have the immortal can become mortal. No, no, sir. That's how our moksha, the immortality is this. Amritaha Bhavanti. Well, this is something that please give up the notion that I am mortal. Freedom from the notion that I am mortal is the moksha. That is the freedom. Freedom from the notion that I am mortal. But how can I give up that notion? Just give up the notion that I am the body. Pretya asman loka namrutaha bhavanti. Asman loka. From this karyakrana sanghata. Well, uh, withdrawal can never be a, uh, immortality. Well, through the knowledge that I am not this physical body. That's a notion that I am the body. I am the senses. But how will I know? Shrutrasya shrutra. Manaso manoyat, vachoha vacham, pranasya prana. If you, if you have an eye sense uh, in just in all these organs, eye sense in the physical body, eye sense in the subtle body, eye sense in the mind, I mean, and all senses, till then, there is, the, till then uh, what, I will uh, not get immortality. You are immortal, but you don't know that you are immortal. And you live with that notion. How long that notion will remain? So long as you won't get known. It will remain. And how, what is the proof that it is? Um, it continues? The birth is a, a proof. And how many births have gone? Infinite. How will you know? Because Jiva is infinite. Jiva is infinite. And uh, I, mean, um, I mean beginningless. And therefore not infinite. I'm sorry. Beginningless. And therefore if it is beginningless, we must have taken several uh, Janmas. And just to remove this notion, Bhagavan is giving you varieties of the Janmas. And that notion, because of that only you are getting janma, you are considering yourself as karta, bhokta, everything. You are not karta, give up the notion that you are karta. That is what is required. Karta can never become a karta. Mortal can never become mortal. Bhokta can never become a bhokta and a bhokta can never become bhokta also. No way. Give up the notion that I am karta. 
That's all. You have to just give up the notion like the hot potato in your hand. Give up. But I'm not able to give up. Well, pray to the Lord. I'm not able to give up the notion. Then, well, then, because the hot potato does not go from my hand. Hey, that is in your hand, but still it doesn't go. Then pray to God that let it drop the, that hot potato from your hand so that at least you will not have more buns. Anyway, Srotrasya Srotram Manaso Manoyad Vacho Havacham Pranasya Pranaha Well, Dheeraha Atimuchya Pretya Smal Loka Dambrutaha Bhamanti So, well, I am just a uh, consciousness, Chaitanya. So, body dies is not a problem also. That I die is a problem. As I told you, what is subject to that dies. No problem then. But basically, I, I sense is there in the body. And therefore, um, I die is a problem. Body is ugly is not a problem. I am ugly is a problem. And uh, well, body is fat is not a problem. And I am fat is a problem. Basically, everything is beautiful. To consider oneself ugly is a, is a really a ugly notion. <laughs> it's an ugly notion. Everything is beautiful. By telling that you are not beautiful, you are insulting Ishwara. Because Ishwara has taken this form. And therefore everything is beautiful. And Pucha Swamiji, if you ask Pucha Swamiji, he will, he, will, he will prove it. In your presence, he will prove that you are the most beautiful creature in the world. He will prove it, I tell you. It starts with that nose and, the, and this, you know, then taking the tea and getting the smell. He, Swamiji gets this kind of idea, I don't know. That nose instead of here, I, it should have been here on the head. And then he realized, no, 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 that's not correct. It is proper that it is here. If you remember that, I don't want to go. But this kind of thing, he used to narrate very, at, in a great length. That taking coffee and this and that. And, so, what I'm saying, wonderful design. So, what, how about suffering? This is emotional suffering. This is emotional suffering. Nobody has. Nobody has. A cow, whatever kind of a horns it has, I tell you, it, it, it does not have, even it looks at you, he will not feel <laughs> he is ugly and this human being is, is a, a, a wonderful creature. So, body is fat is not a problem. I am fat is a problem. So, you, you can understand now, I am fat is a notion. That is a problem. Body is a fat, it's not a problem. And that's how others' bodies are fat. We sometimes, you know, I mean, we sometimes enjoy you. What <laughs> the person also, that the person is so fat. Anyway, so attitudes of the body, mind, senses are taken to be the I, and then I suffer, suffer and suffer, life after life. Because ignorance is well entrenched. Beginning like ignorance will not go unless you gain a knowledge which is opposite to it. And therefore it just continues and make you suffer. Since the ignorance is there, I notion in the body mind senses is there. And therefore, uh, well, I am ugly, I am that, that kind of notions also will be there. And pe person keeps suffering without any reason. He keeps suffering. Bhagavan, that is how said Ashochyanan Vashochastam. I don't find any, any cause for the sorrow, Arjuna. And why are you suffering? Why are, you, why are you having a long face? I don't understand that for what purpose. So that is what it is. So freedom from suffering is freedom from the notion about the I. Well, it brings suffering, which causes suffering. Notion to, um, regarding the I makes you, uh, I mean, it will cause you suffering and give up the notion is called freedom. That is the word moksha. Freedom means moksha. Or moksha means freedom. Either way. Shastra uses the word atimuchya and asman lokat pretya to convey two different ideas. Now I will come to that. Jivan mukti etc. We are before that whatever has gone let it go. So uh, Bhashakara has uh, not defined in that way. We have to interpret in one other way also. Because basically looks similar. Atimuchya means you know as so giving up. Transcending. Transcending from the ultimately body. That's what it has been told here. Shrotrasa, Shrotram, Manaso, Manaha, Vacho, Vacha means are transcending from the senses, transcending from the mind, transcending from the prana, transcending from the physical body. Well, that becomes like a death then. Then uh, Asman, Lokat, Pretya also the same thing. Giving up, uh, I mean withdrawing from the body, mind, sense complex. 
So we will have to take that there are two results have been talked about. Atimucha talks about a one kind of a result of this knowledge and uh, Asman Lokat Pretya talks about another type of result. So Atimucha Dhiraha Amrutaha Bhavanti giving up the Atma Buddhi, I notion in the ears, eyes, minds, etc. Releasing the Atma from all the wrong, wrong notions, the wise people gain immortality. So when you don't have eye sense at all, you will not have a, any kind of a suffering because a sense of limitation also will go away, which we have not talked, but you can understand. When you say I am a hearer, you are a limited entity. I, I am a thinker, you are a limited entity. I am a hearer, limited entity. And limited means okay, that's also okay. But then they, they, are, they keep changing. They keep changing and therefore uh, basically what strength you have in the ears right now will not be the strength tomorrow. And so that's what the suffering is. When doctor tells you, yeah, correct. Well, they take that, you know, some, what is that? Uh, audiogram. Audiogram. They bring it near and, uh, and then they, oh, sir, yes, you are losing your hearing capacity. I'm very sorry. Oh, how much I have lost? 20%, 30%, 40%. <coughs> Immediately you feel, why should you feel? But you are basically ear of the ear. No, I am ear. So I'm, that's how I say I'm hearer. <laughs> Therefore, that's how giving up the notion is a jivan bhakti. Sense of limitation goes away. Sense of um, discomfort goes away. So far as in your eye, you are a limited entity. I, I, I'm sure you will not have a sense of um, joy. Definitely not. That's how we always equate a limitlessness centered on the self is the fullness or happiness. So whenever you experience your own fullness, I mean, you, you drop your sense of limitation pertaining to the body, mind, sense, complex, of course. Well, then definitely you will have a sense of fullness. Same I experience happiness or fullness. That itself proves that basically you must be a limitless entity. And because of the identification with that, you are, uh, you are having that notion that I am body, mind, sense, complex you are feeling the sense of limitation. It's a notion. So when you give it up, atimuchya, then you will have a jivan mukti. Well, you are free, free from the notions, free from the suffering. So, uh, so basically releasing the atma from all these strong notions, wise person gain immortality. Pranasa pranaha, that's how see, now, now we can understand. Some person says, well, giving up, giving up of the you know that this body mind sense complex cannot be prana se prana giving up the basically what there is uh, prana se prana means what there is no basically where is the question of giving up prana could you what i'm saying is giving up the prana and then for enjoying the jivan mukti cannot be possible so there is no last breath or the first breath for the atma what is meant here is only giving up the notion that i is all of them now, okay, will the wise person come back again after death or not? Each wise person basically is same Brahman and there is no coming back from Brahman because it's limitless. Where is question of coming back and going away? There is no question of coming back and going away. So wise people know that they are Brahman and therefore, so there is no coming back also for, for them. There is no person remained to come back to begin with. Yeah, one who wants, one who comes back must be a person. A limited entity. But he knows I am Brahman. I am no more a person. He never considers, in his eye, he never considers as an individual. He may say so. That's what I gave you the example. When you say I am intelligent, but in your eye, well, your eye is, eye is already placed in the, in, in the buddhi. Even though you take help of the body to utter this, that I am intelligent, you utter, you take help of your speech, Everything you may take help of, but uh, even though they are there, your eye is already placed in the, it has already transcended and placed in the intelligence, uh, in, the, in the mind. Therefore, uh, it is possible. The wise person continues to say like that, that I am as though human being and these, but in his, um, in his own vision, in his awareness, the eye is Brahman. He is no more a person. And therefore, if he, if he has that kind of a vision,
if he has that kind of a vision that uh, I am a person, there is no Brahmanishta. There is no Brahmanishta. Clarity means this clarity. I am Brahman, nothing else. And everything else. But he, 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 he says that I am individual. Why you are worrying about him? I am not worrying about him. He, even though he says I am individual, that's just a mythya. So there is no really a person to come back also. I am talking about now Videh Mukti. There is no person to come back, to take birth. And so because he says I am Brahman. And therefore Asman Lokat Pritya, leaving this physical body, they don't come back to another physical body. Gone for good. So this has to be pointed out because Shastra talks about Loka Prapti also, right? For the person who leaves the body, gains another body, etc. And different world and attainment of various realms of experience like Swarga, etc. also. So Vedic heaven and Punar Janma and whole, this is all an arrangement. Arrangement within the karma and uh, it's a karma model and we accept it also. But that all is within the realm of ignorance. So far as you, you consider yourself as an individual, all these things will continue. All these things will continue in that realm. So, I mean, Veda itself has presented a model of karma and uh, so the same Shastra has to release the, the jiva, the individual from the spell of karma because they only introduce this model of karma and they only know, show you the means how to become free from the karma etc, how to become free from the janma and marana etc and well, that release from karma of course and moksha is uh, I mean, possible is presented here saying Ati Mucce Di Pratya Asman Loka Amruta Bhavanti. So there is no coming back for the wise people. So they have released uh, Atma from body, mind, sense complex by giving up the notion. Could you follow? In their cognition, they know that I am Brahman. I was Brahman. I am Brahman. I will be Brahman. That's how it is. So Atimucha refers to Jivan Mukti and Asman Lokat Pratya Amritaha Bhavanti while releases uh, to absence of rebirth, etc. So their pranas do not proceed further on the fall of the body. And that is told uh, in the Shastra also. Natasya Pranaha Utkramanti in Bhadarani Kuparishad 446 it has been told. Tasya Pranaha, the person who knows uh, the true nature of the self, that I am Brahman, etc. Well, the Sepranaha now Utkramanti doesn't go to, uh, it does not proceed further for the, in search of next body, in search of next Janma. It doesn't search for it. Here itself, atra, Atraiva Samavaniyante, here itself they get perished. Prana becomes perished. So, whole subtle body merges into subtle components, and gross body merges into gross components, and therefore all resolve here. So this is an expression of the Shastra uh, to make one understand that Atma is always free from the karma. One, if, if really I am attached to karma, I cannot become free from the karma. Jain, Jains people, they believe that Atma is basically is contaminated by karmas and, uh, and that to, because of karma we have a suffering, we have janma, we have death and in between there are varieties of experiences of pain and everything because all the karmas we have done in the past are attached to the Atma and we have to release the Atma from all the Karmas and that's how a model of Tapasharya and everything they have including, uh, you know, um, I mean, um, taking away that uh, every hair, they, when they take a sannyasa in their uh, Muni, etc. Every hair they pull. They say by doing that, you get rid of one Karma because you feel, experience the pain. And uh, so when you experience the pain, well, your papa gets exhausted ultimately. And therefore, they do that Kesha Lunchanam, they call it. Kesha Lunchanam means, uh, you know, um, pulling the hair. Anyway, so this is a, this is a model they have. That Atma is connected or it's, it's contaminated. Has become as though Ashuddha because of karma in the past. We say Atma was always free from the karma. Better you give up the notion that I am a karta, etc and that by itself you become free. So one does not basically, if you are a karta, you cannot escape from the karma. So you can never become free from the karma and then definitely you can never become free from the even janma and I mean, birth and death. But if you can become free from birth and death by just by knowledge, 
means the karmas were basically really are not um, attached to in, uh, atma atma is free from the notion of even kartrutvam also so when one comes to know this nature of atma which one must know of course then one is free from birth and death because all the karmas ultimately get falsified so kshiyante chasti karmani tasmin drishte paravare that sau mundaka says kshiyante cha asya karmani asya gnani na sarva karmani kshiyante get burnt that's how even in fourth chapter also said sarva karmani basma sat kurute gnana agni in this gnana agni bhagwan says all his karmas are burnt sanchita and prarabdha gets exhausted etc no agami etc and we have seen that in tattva boda now this mantra basically the mantra number 2 is or tells all that is to be told in a very brief manner and uh, it also explain the meaning and its style also so shrotrasya shrotram uh, well it is a way of presenting the consciousness and uh, upanishad is very confident that one will recognize it as as the invariable consciousness in every cognition and everything so it is self revealing that's how it they have not uh, told very clearly of course what is it etc of course upanishad is going to tell we need not have to worry because here chakshusha chakshu has been told later in the fifth or sixth mantra they will say well yat chakshusha na pashyati yena chakshum shi pashyati tadeva brahmatvam viddhi nedam yadi nu upasate here it has been told shrotrasya shrotram but what is that shrotrasya shrotram will be told it will be told ahead in in, in the after few verses that uh, yat shrotrena na shunoti yena shrotram idagam shutam tadeva brahmatvam viddhi nedam yadi nu upasate tad brahmatvam viddhi tvam viddhi me you know what i have told you guru says that teacher says that what i have already told you as a shrotrasya shrotram year of the year is nothing but brahman tvam viddhi me you know it tad brahma etc so it is going to come even in for the manaso manaha also it is there yan manasa na manute yena ahur manomatam tadeva brahmatvam viddhi nedam yadinam upasate ya pranena na praniti yena pranu pranam etc that that i don't remember totally that verse but it is our whatever has been told here yad yat vachana abhyuditam yena vaga abhyudyate tadeva brahmatvam viddhi nedam yadidu upasate whatever has been told about everything he will tell it as a brahman shrotrasya shrotram brahman vachoha vag brahman manaso manaha brahman chakshusha chakshu brahman clearly every verse will be there after just three or four verses it will be there so what is shrotrasya shrotram etc so have a patience it they will be t- telling you it is brahman but they should tell here because it's self revealing it's invariably present if it is not there where is the status of e what is the status of year the very existence of year is not possible year has a yearness because of the consciousness which is self revealing year is revealed by the consciousness consciousness does need not get revealed and therefore it is self revealing and therefore shruti does not bother at all that well uh, i should tell you that you are self revealing you need not come to me sir you need not come to kino upanishad that you are self revealing in fact you are self revealing and thereby you are coming to me then what to to know yourself uh, what you are basically but you are self revealing you you know you are and therefore i you no upanishad tells so yeah i am proving you that you are now you are brahman is proved you are is not proved and therefore well i am is self revealing and therefore i don't require any pramana including veda for that i am brahman just a mere consciousness and i am not the ear eyes etc i am not the sense organs i am not the body well that is to be told that is correct for that veda is a pramana but basically the i is the self revealing and therefore shrotrasya shrotram is the subject i which is self revealing and therefore shruti does not oblige us by telling what it is actually anyway so this is how it is but uh, now upanishad uh, um, now basically you know clay explains in the mantra 3 why it is adopting this particular uh, method of unfoldment round about me- uh, 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 un- unfoldment of the subject by telling shrotra shrotra because there is a very genuine reason for that and that is told in the mantra number 3 and uh, let's read that so na tatra chakshur gachati न वाग्गछति 
नो मन न विम न विजानीम यथतदनुशिष्यादिताधी शुश्रुम पूर्वेशा ये नस्तव्याचि एज ऐ से सैकेंड मंत्र इज द एसेंस ऑफ द एंटायर किनोपनिषद एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ द मंत्र आर ओनली व्याख्या आई मीन ए कॉमेंट्री ऑफ दिस ऑफ दिस मंत्र विच वी कॉल इट एज ए सूत्रभूत विच इज लाइक एन एफोरिजम विच इज लाइक ए कैप्शन and uh, this kind of sentences are there in um, many upanishads in taittiriya upanishad also we have one a sentence and uh, that is that's like a capsule and then the entire upanishad is um, just an commentary on that particular sentence alone and that sentence is brahmavid apnoti param brahmavid apnoti param the whole this everything in the this sentence has been uh, i mean expanded later Brahma with so what is Brahman? Then it has been told Satyam Nyana Manantam Brahma etc. What is Brahma with? Who is the knower of Brahman? So then it has been told further. So Yo Veda, one who knows well Yo Veda Nihitam Guhayam Parame Vyomin, so Ashnute Sarvam Kaman Samashnute Iti. It is nothing but Param Apnoti. So this is how it is, and that is not sufficient. सत्यम ज्ञान अनंतम ब्रह्म मीन्स वॉट अल्टीमेटली इट इज अ जगत कारण सो देन तस्माद वा ये तस्माद आत्मन आकाश संभूत ओल सैक्शन एंटायर सैक्शन इज जस्ट ए एक्सपेन्शन ऑफ ए सेंटेंस स्मॉल सेंटेंस कॉल्ड ब्रह्म विद आपनोति परम सो हियर ऑल्सो दिस मंत्र टू इज बेसिकली लाइक दिस सेंटेंस वेरी कंडेन्स सेंटेंस which has been now expanded in the entire can operation now it has been expanded so um, uh, this is how it is and so but the uh, only thing is uh, 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 this student ask what is that devaha and that uh, devaha has been revealed here uh, by the teacher as shrutra sushrutram etc but uh, you know the definition as such is given of that consciousness without uttering the word consciousness or chaitanya etc without uttering word brahman or atma etc of course it has been told but how to basically um, teacher has not pointed out how to identify this divine principle ashishya asked what is that deva what is that divine principle teacher said shrutrasya shrutram then so he defined what is that deva that is there but how to unfold that deva that has not been told this is very very uh, very uh, i mean uh, very essential to understand that there is a divine principle and living the body the and uh, all the organs and everything they they function uh, they do varieties of the activities as though prompted everything correct but how to unfold that consciousness that has not been told definition is given shrotrasya shrotram deva और श्रोत्र से श्रोत्रम आत्मा श्रोत्र से श्रोत्रम चैतन्य वॉट एवर बट डेफिनेशन इज देर टू थिंग्स आर रिक्वायर्ड आई वॉन्ट टू कन्वे समथिंग टू यू सो लक्षण हैज बीन गिवन द वेरी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक द डेफिनेशन ऑफ दट आत्मा हैज बीन गिवन लाइक श्रोत्र से श्रोत्रम मनसो मन वाचो वाचम बट हाउ टू वॉट इज द मैथड इन बाय विच आई कैन नो दैट आत्मा इट इज मियरली नॉट सफिशियंट दैट यू डिफाइन you have to have uh, a mode of revealing also just definition is not sufficient two things are required in knowing a thing and that is one is called lakshanam second is called pramanam two things are there so pramanam means a mode of uh, knowing the thing so lakshanam is first you you, uh, you should be able to recognize a thing i will give you example so lakshanam means uh, you should uh, know the characteristic of a thing in order to know at the same time you should have a means of knowledge also to know could you follow what i am saying you should know you should know the particular thing by its definition as well as you should have a means of knowing also and therefore now i will give you an example 
Suppose that there is a one friend of mine and uh, we both are sitting in a in a living room. And uh, well, of course, and uh, I have some difficulty in laying and therefore I don't get up often. And so, uh, well, and I wanted to some good photographs of, of uh, you know, a beautiful, I mean, beautiful sunrise, etc. When I visited uh, before few years, this is all a story, huh? cooked up story. Don't, don't accept anything what I, but uh, through that I want to say something. And then I wanted to some, show some good photographs. And so, which I have, I mean, taken at, of a particular place. And uh, then uh, I, it was in my iPad. And then I said uh, to that, my friend, that, well, I want to show, but you know, I could not get up. So it's in my room. Can you bring that um, from my room? Uh, then he said, what? I said, iPad. What is that iPad? Okay. Now, now understand that. So what I have to do now first, please tell me what I have to do. I have to define the iPad. Because there are various electronic gadgets on my table in that room. And for, from that he has to pick up just iPad. Now because there, are, uh, uh, there is a mobile there, and there is something computer, I mean the laptop is there, uh, some, several things are there. And therefore I have to first define iPad. That's called definition. Lakshanam. So I have to tell, I have to give him a characteristic of an iPad. That, that, uh, that it is smaller than uh, laptop and this like this and and it is not like mobile you know the mobile and something something whatever I don't know so what I am telling you so Lakshanam has been given should be given Lakshanam should be given first thing do you think uh, he will be able to pick up the iPad what do you think if I just tell him Lakshanam is it sufficient uh, that he will come with the iPad no, he should have eyes, right? If person, suppose, suppose my friend is blind and he knows what iPad is. Can I tell him? We know already. He knows already that the, this is called iPad, but he doesn't have eyes. Can I tell him go to the next room and bring the iPad? No. So the understand the one case in which one person doesn't know the iPad but he has eyes means is, means of knowledge is there but no definition but he doesn't know what iPad is he cannot bring the other person knows what iPad is but he doesn't have a means of knowledge called eyes to pick up the iPad he also cannot bring so what do you think if, if I, I if, you tell, if I tell a person to bring iPad he should have, he should know what iPad is. He should have a means of knowing that, yes, iPad is here. I should bring it, right? So he should have a means of knowledge in order to pick up that object. And as well as he should be able to identify the object also. Two things are required. And therefore, therefore, uh, well, this is, ha this happens in the class. Swamiji, so and so has come to your class. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> How will I know? I have not met the person. So I said, uh, what, what, I'm so and so Swamiji, so and so name. He has come to your class today. And I said, no, he has not come. He, what are you talking Swamiji? He told that he has attended the class and he has come back. And he called me also that I have gone for the class, etc. And you are saying uh, he has not come? Why? Can you tell me? My eyes are open. I am seeing all the students in the class. I must have seen him also. But still I am saying, well, he has not come. Why? Because I, I do not, the so-and-so person, well, who called me, has not defined what kind of a person it is. And then he defines, Swamiji, the person with specs, and you know, today he has wear, a, I think, a red shirt, and he doesn't have hair, and this and that, and yeah, yeah, ah, that person was there, yeah. Could you, that is the reason. So, Lakshanam also is required, and Pramanam also is required. Lakshana Pramana Bhyam Vastu Siddhi So, you should be able to identify an object and at the same time, you should have a means of knowledge also. Then only a Vastu Siddhi, then only you will understand that so and so thing is there. Question of picking up the object is later. 
so and so person has come in the class well the existence of the person is for me only when i am able to identify the person and well um the definition also should be there as well as through my means of knowledge i have contacted the object also that person also so lakshanam and pramana this is a very big thing lakshana pramana bhyam vastu siddhihi the self is there well that is correct but uh, you have just defined that uh, shrotrasya shrotram etc etc but how what are the means of knowing that vastu which is present in the body could you follow shrotrasya shrotram manaso manaha is a just a lakshana but you are not giving us the mode of knowing on uh, that self and therefore how will we know how will we know that such and such thing is there and therefore you have to tell it so you have defined it is all right o teacher in the second verse you have defined shrotra shrotra etc but you have uh, we don't have a mode of knowing that the self and therefore we cannot tell whether the self is there or not so shrotra shrotra is for you but not for me okay we'll discover tomorrow om purna muda purna midam purna purna mudachyate पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ श्रीगुभ्यो नम हरि ओ